Okay. All right, so a bit of, a bit of context. Um, it's a human physiology module. Um, so it's a first year biomedical engineering program. And typically there are about 40 students in the class. Um, and one of the key things we meet for an hour a week. So it's pretty tight. There's lots of stuff to do in that, in that one hour, um, which has an impact on how I deliver the e-portfolio. Um, so just the e-portfolio assessment um, as part of the assessment schedule, it's worth 50% of the, the total marks. Um, and just a brief overview, this is students over the course of the year, so two semesters, they get eight scaffolded tasks. Uh, so the tasks at the start are fairly straightforward, kind of goal setting, and it's reflecting a little bit on that. And then they do some research topics over the year as they build up their skills. And they're kind of always trying to make connections and trying to get them to make connections between physiology and engineering. And then there are also some self and peer review tasks as well. So they get the task. They usually have one to two weeks to do the e-portfolio task and do their reflection and so on. And then um, after two weeks, then I provide feedback to them and uh, try and uh, give both audio feedback and written feedback to them. Um, so in terms of choosing a platform to deliver the e-portfolio or students to build their e-portfolio on, um, so I want something that's easy to use, both from my perspective and also the student perspective. Um, so, you know, enable the students to be creative and you know, produce content in their own style and um, their own reflections. And then I want to be able to you know, readily provide feedback to them. Um, and I want something which can facilitate peer review so students can share content with each other. Um, so I mentioned we only meet for an hour in the week. Um, so there's little time for uh, a lot of training to, to, to get them up to speed on, a, uh, on an e-portfolio platform. And so, you know, there are plenty of dedicated e-portfolio platforms out there. Um, you know, so, and I have experience as a student and an instructor in using Mahara, for example. And my experience from both teaching and a student, you know, there is a little bit of um, support needed uh, to get people up and running and using that platform. Um, so I anticipated that could be a little bit of a, a problem in terms of in my situation where there's you know, very tight time constraints. You're just um, in you know, meeting face to face for an hour. Um, we don't have a, a you know, cross institute e-portfolio platform in GMIT, the trialing Pebblepad. Uh, but at the moment, you know, there's no support outside the module for particular e-portfolio platforms. So with that in mind, I decided to use uh, OneNote. Um, so I use OneNote a lot in the module anyway, just for general delivery. Um, so for those who are not familiar, you know, I use the, the class notebook add-on to OneNote. And what that does, it divides the, the notebook up into different sections. So for, firstly, there's a collaboration space, which both students and the lecturer can contribute to. Uh, there's the content library, which I use, and the students can just view, and I just use that for general activities in the module. But then students have their own student section um, where they can create stuff. And it's in here where I, um, where the students do their e-portfolio. So I create a task, I create a template for them, uh, and then it's distributed. So just hit the distribute page, and it's just distributed into all their, um, their student sections. So the students can then uh, do their task um, in whatever format that they want. And then after the time is up, then I can just hit the review student work and that locks their content and I can provide, easily provide audio uh, feedback to them and also written feedback to them. Um, so they worked on that, you know, throughout the year and then towards the end of the year, uh, for last year's cohort, I, I just surveyed them. So I got them to, um, uh, or asked them to participate in an anonymous survey on, on forums, and <clears throat> 34 students responded. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so about 62% you know, of the class um, got a reasonable snapshot of people's feelings. So I asked them a lot of questions about their general e-portfolio e experiences, but I also asked them questions about their experiences, um, their OneNote experience on you for the e-portfolio. And that's what I'm just going to report on here. Um, so in terms of what formats did students use when they're creating their portfolios, um, you know, lots of students used um, uh, mind maps, and embedding video, and then you know, almost all students used images. I'm surprised that there's two students who didn't use any images in their e-portfolio. There were some kind of text heavy examples. And then also a lot of students, uh, some students um, you know, recorded themselves, you know, doing their reflections on their particular tasks. Um, and then other, other that might have included you know, embedding a Word document or um, a PowerPoint presentation inside OneNote um, or, or other formats like that. Um, in terms, 
what they produce. So, you know, some students produced hand drawn work. So an example up here in the top left is a you know, beautiful artistic summary and reflection on the topic of blood flow and pressure. And then they scan that up and, and embedded it in one note. Other students like to use Prezi. So then they just, you know, they create their Prezi and then just have the um, a link in one note on their section, which I could access and then give feedback on. Uh, lots of students created mind maps either by hand or using online tools for that. And then other students might have, um, you know, this example down here in the bottom right is uh, just a newsletter they created on a particular topic in Microsoft Publisher, and then they could just embed that into OneNote. Um, in terms of um, some responses to statements, um, most of the students didn't actually have any experience of using OneNote before the module, um, which kind of surprised me. Um, but that's the way it was. But you know, no students reported having having any difficulties in using OneNote for the ePortfolio, and thankfully they felt like they were getting better. So their proficiency at OneNote was um, improving throughout the year. Um, in terms of you know, some comments, um, the overriding comments for students, it was you know, easy to use, um, it was accessible. They liked that they didn't have to you know, save it. Stuff was automatically saved, it was there. They could access it on different devices very easily. Um, and you know, some students commented about it being a lot less stressful than submitting assignments on Moodle. Um, and it just allowed them to be cr uh, creative. They could create whatever they wanted inside the, um, the OneNote platform. Um, the only negative comments were about the speed. So the, the syncing of their OneNote page um, could take a bit of time if their broadband wasn't great. And that was my own experience as well. If I was teaching from home or working from home, my broadband is not great. I'm in rural Galway. Um, so OneNote's not great in terms of that. So it does require a good um, internet connection. But overall, it was um, the student experience is quite positive. Um, my own experience, um, I thought OneNote was good too. I think you know, it wasn't an obstacle for students to create. Um, it enabled students to create whatever they wanted in their own personal style and reflect on that uh, on the platform. Um, it was easy for me to give feedback to students. So it was very easy to give audio feedback um, and students appreciated that. And then also the written feedback. And then it required very little support. Um, it was almost, you know, I, I can't recall any questions last year um, bar one particular area, which I'm going to talk about now, but students really didn't have any difficulties and they got used to using OneNote very quickly. And OneNote's also something that are used in you know, several modules. So their familiarity with the platform was, um, was good. However, there was one area and that was around the peer reviewing. Um, in the class notebook, it's not easy for students to, um, to share their own section. So I'm the owner of the notebook. So students can't share their own student section with another student. Um, and so that um, created a bit of a barrier to getting them to you know, share and talk about their work with each other, which is an important component to think of the ePortfolio experience. So the workaround for me um, was a bit cumbersome, but I used the collaboration space. So what I did was I created various subgroups within the collaboration space so the students could just access their own particular group and view whatever content was in that particular section, their group section. Uh, so they copied their work from their own student section into here, and then that allowed students to look at each other and give feedback and talk about each other's um, um, work. Um, this wasn't that easy, it was a bit awkward. One minute. And did provide did require me to provide some uh, support to students and create some videos because it wasn't you know um, there's various issues when they're just trying to copy from one section to another. Um, so that would definitely be somewhere where it'd be nice to see improvement in OneNote. But um, overall, I think OneNote was a positive experience for both uh, the students and me. So key points for me was it's easy to use, uh, it's accessible. But then kind of the negative side and um, the peer review is a little bit awkward. Okay, thanks for your time. Oh, my God, that was uh, bang on. Uh, well done. Um, yeah, I have to say it, it's certainly uh, an interesting thing there. And as I said, because I think when we think of ePortfolio, I think people often think of stuff that has to be like Pebble Pad or Pat Bright or, or Mahara, but this clearly shows. Uh, Orna, you wanted to come in? So I'd get a question in, you know? Yeah. Um, a lot of second level uh, people are using OneNote, actually, Tom. It's very prevalent because a lot of them are Microsoft schools. Um, and just curious, Cormac, um, 
why did you introduce the portfolio? What kind of assessment did you have before and what, what made you kind of think of changing? I took advantage of the pandemic. <laughs> Was one of the positives. Um, so the, what your pre, the, the official assessment schedule for the module is um, there was a sixty percent terminal exam, um, and then you know some it was a small project. So twenty percent was a project. So originally I had the portfolio just as a small project. Twenty percent. So they did a couple of tasks um, um, during the year. Um, and then with the pandemic, I could dispense with the final exam. So then I was able to expand it. Um, so my reason for expanding it was, um, for me, it may it allowed students to make connections uh, for the content in the module to the real world. And, you know, it allowed them to research topics and make connections between physiology and engineering and kind of reflect on their experiences with that. Um, so to me, it was just more a real, more realistic form of assessment. Um, I'm not that interested in students being able to just memorize lots of physiological terms. They do. I do test on that. There's some. They do some smaller assessments on that, like small ten percent assessments throughout the year. Um, but that was my main motivation, and it's it's really positive. I think the students really enjoy it. Um, it allows them to be creative and allows them to explore topics within physiology that interest them. Um, you know, give them the freedom to choose what they want to, to go after mm, and make, really make interesting. connections with engineering. The authentic yeah. bit and the applied bit are really the strengths. And it's great to see people taking advantage of the pandemic to uh, shake up their assessment as well, because I was up to similar things. So well done, Cormac. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, Thanks. Lorna. Uh, Bernie, uh, you had your hand up and then... Uh, yeah. Aaron. Quick thing for you, uh, like Warna, um you know, I, I see the second level students doing this. I have a daughter, 13, and um, I, I'm using her old iPhone, and she's got a OneNote on there, and I could actually see her teacher doing this stuff on OneNote during a class live. It's quite interesting. But yeah. secondly, for you, uh, Cormac, um, did you use the OneNote app? Did you use it in the browser? Did you use it on the on the um, the OS side? What was your primary place of using OneNote? For me, I use it on the on my laptop. Um, okay. But I do know students use certainly in the lectures, just as you say, your know, students in the lecture mm -hmm. might use it on their phones on the on the app, and they're following yeah. me on the app rather than looking. You know, this is pre-pandemic. They're not they're online at the moment. You yeah. Pre-pandemic, they were not, not looking at the screen where I was displaying stuff. They're following it um, on the yeah. app uh, on their phone because they can just it's more their own pace than yeah. Yeah, well, just just what I, in my experience, the app syncs better than the big old browser side. And yeah. secondly, I use it because I can see the bold print showing up when they actually in, do work inside the OneNote. So then I can quickly go to the bold print and bang, 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 open it and see stuff. It's faster than notifications on the phone for anything else. Right. So yeah. I, I'm a, I've, I've, I'm a, I've been converted <laughs> about okay. two years ago. It's really fair play to you to, to using it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Barry. Yeah, great.